Alright, so I showed you guys this old oil burner that we're going to be using for our forge exhaust hood. Now we're going to start ripping this thing apart. Uh, basically you want to get the electrical cabinet off of here, get the oil pump off of here, the uh, solenoid valves, the pressure switch, all that good stuff. Pretty much everything that made this thing a burner we want it off of here because we need this wide open. It's a pretty stout little blower in this and I'll show you guys that as we progress. Um, so, I guess, let's just get after it. Now this electrical box we're going to hold on to because we can make a nice control box out of it. And like I said earlier, we do have another one. All other burner set up that we can use for something else. I won't use this something like this for a forge blower, it's just too much. Actually that heat gun I'm using actually works perfectly. And I think if I remove the heater elements out of that heat gun, they don't work anyway, it'd be even easier. neat thing about something like this, there are so many uses for an old burner like this that you wouldn't always think about. Let's see, we'll get the, uh, can you guys see any of this? Okay, so this is the line that goes into the drawer assembly. We'll get this guy out of here. drawer assembly. So, fuel enters here, shoots out the nozzle. The nozzle is drilled with a little orifice in it. It is actually drilled for a specific angle of spray. You have your electrodes right here. These look like they weren't adjusted very well. And you can see all the snot and soot and stuff on that nose cone. That indicates you're getting a dirty burn and incomplete combustion and that is probably from those electrodes being way out of whack on this one but hey it was free so I'm not complaining so this little fella right here this is your CAD cell now some of the bigger burners use a UV sensor on it to see the flame but this is the guy right here that goes to your primary control that tells you hey there's flame there it's okay to keep running but if it sees flame before it's supposed to it's supposed to cut the burner out and it's supposed to be the end of it. There we go. That's the inside of that guy looks like. Didn't think that was going to come apart. All right, let's keep going here. Let's see if we can get this oil pump off while we get covered in oil. Freaking oil and water and oil. Gotta love it. See, I think that's a 5 8. Should be able to take, I'm thinking, should be able to take this whole assembly off at once here. 
Oh, 916 she is. Now, if we can't get it this way, we can pop this whole assembly off right here, which we're probably going to have to anyway. Let's get that spring off of there. That would help quite a bit. There we go. Make it a little bit easier. There we go. Good little coupling there. These are very reliable couplings right here. And that rubber, that's good quality stuff. There's no really no wear on that at all to speak of. No. Always good to know. This is always handy stuff to hang on to. This oil pump could be very handy for other things. At least that's what I tell myself. And of course there's our Nuts and bolts down there. Let's see. Let's get the rest of this part and show you guys what's inside this. spot to put bolts. You guys ever notice when you wrench on stuff you find that your hands bend in, no, in ways that no other human being's hands should be bending? There we go. There is our assembly. Now the bearings in the motor is actually what supports the squirrel cage. And get this stuff apart for you. And that's what we have inside. Nice little blower. Now you want to spin these if it's something you're reusing. Spin it. Make sure you don't have a major wobble in that thing. I mean, there's this is a little bit in this, but it's not bad. It's actually quite livable. Like I said, we have a spare. Now squirrel cages are actually pretty easy to find. You can get those relatively cheap, relatively easy. This part right here is quite important. 
If you don't have this part, it's not going to suck air the way you need it to. So you need it to suck the air in through here and push out the other side. And if this isn't right, then the rest of it won't be either. There. We're pretty well ready to use this thing. It's a good feeling. Now I have my options for mounting this. And we'll turn the camera off and swap up here. Alright everybody, so this is where we're at. As I've said before, uh, last video, this is going to be the exhaust fan for our forge hood. Now, I'm not doing a direct exhaust out the side like you see in your typical forges that don't require a fan or a blower or anything like that for exhausting. To be honest with you, I don't want to run the stack all the way up the side of this building. That's that's a big thing for me. I just the ladders and all that stuff, getting on the extension ladders that high up, I'm just not comfortable with it right now and uh not ready to start doing that again. But um so how we're probably going to mount this, we're probably going to mount this right here to one of the floor joists, this plate. And what that'll do, that'll hold this perfectly where I want it. And what I plan on doing, I will come off of this with a flange. With a flange and like a 6 inch uh, duct stove pipe adapter. We'll run that into a small hood over top of the forge. And then this we will, uh, I think this is probably going to be 8 inch. We'll tie into this piece and we'll run it right outside. Uh, the other part of that is I want those exhaust gases, give them a little bit of time to cool off. Now granted, they're really not going to be terribly hot. Uh, it's not like we're right over top of the fire. They're going to have time to cool off a little bit as, as they, uh, before they even get to this point. But we want to do that. We're going to set up a control setup for it. And I think what I'm going to do... Hi. I'm not sure if I want to tie the blower in with this because when you get the forge going you don't necessarily um, oh how do I put it you don't necessarily run the forge blower itself right off you need to give your your uh, ignition fuel a little bit of time to burn get going good get good and hot and then you turn your blower on it doesn't take very long so I could probably put like a Put a little time delay in there but i may i may just run them at the same time so that you can't run the uh you can't run the forge blower itself without actually running this and when you're burning anthracite like i'm doing you need that blower going all the time now the other thing i might be doing is getting that the little forge blower getting it so it's actually outside so it's fairly quiet this is going to be loud enough this will have some noise Probably when we're running this and we're running the camera, we're probably going to have to uh, do a whole lot of music, but we do that on this channel plenty anyway. Now if I want to, I could finish gutting this guy right here. And uh, I could finish gutting that out 
and add this back on here and give myself a nice little flange to screw into the wall but I'm probably not going to do that. I think I would rather I'd rather uh, I think I'm going to come right off of here with it. That's what I'm trying to say. Just can't talk. But anyway, that's where we're at. Now, I'm not sure when we're going to get back to this. I said I've, I've been all week trying to get this video out. If you guys can't tell from the different shirts, every few clips on this one, that's because I've been trying all week to get one filmed and out and just it's been one of those crazy hectic weeks. It's the summer slam is on folks. The, the busyness of summer is here. Hay in season when we can get out there. Just all kinds of stuff going on. The job is very busy so the videos in the summertime really suffer. We don't put a heck of a lot out during the summer. If I can get one or two out a week when we get busy and right into it, I'm lucky. Now, Sunday, it's a good possibility that Sunday I'm going after a big black walnut tree about three hours south of here, three or four hours. If I don't do it this Sunday, it's going to be next Saturday, but we're going to try to hit it Sunday, I believe. And uh, an uncle of mine and I are going down after it, and it's going to be a pretty... From what he tells me, it's a pretty good sized tree. I think he said it was a, a circumference of 103 inches around it, something like that. So that should be a decent sized walnut tree. It looks to be like it's on the bank of a river, so we're going to have to really study it out before we go cutting it down because it looks like it could be a little bit hazardous, but we'll see what happens. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this one. We're just showing off a little bit of uh, recycling stuff. This is the reason that I hoard shit like uh, I hoard stuff constantly. That's what I do. I bring stuff home, it sits around in piles for years, and then all of a sudden I have an aha moment and it gets used. This guy right here will be no different. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one.